I want to talk some wrestling, but uh, I heard you're still standing somewhere on the parkway, still basking in the glow of the Eagles parade the other day. Is that true? You're still there? Uh, I'm somewhere, Mike. I don't even know where I am anymore. <laughs> um, yeah, it was unbelievable experience, man. Uh, it was. I don't know what was more surreal, the fact they won it or the parade or Sunday night on Broad Street. Uh, it was marvelous. Yeah, just a once-in-a-lifetime experience, and I know you were boots on the ground, uh, I guess partaking in the celebrations after the Super Bowl, but then covering the parade. So did you have to sort of differentiate between the journalist and the fan at that point, or was everything sort of blurred into one on parade day? Well, I think that um, I think it was one of those rare occasions where being a fan kind of helped me with my journalism on parade day because, I don't know, I could kind of write about the struggle uh, of, all, of all these people and understand it in a way that only an Eagles fan could. So, um, yeah, I mean, certainly you have to separate it to a point, but it was a column also, so that that's okay, too, um, if you have some first-person experience there, but... Um, I don't know, man. You know, it, it was everybody was feeling the same thing, you know, one way or another. Journalists, uh, fans, kids, adults, uh, elderly. Yeah, it was, it was it was the same feeling, so that made it easier to write. Yeah, run to remember, no doubt. It's been a run to remember for a lot of the team uh, wrestlers going on around South Jersey, and again, the, the team championships in South Jersey wrapping up last night as these teams advance to the state level now. And I know you had a chance to cover the Group Three, check that Group Four final between Highland and Cherry Hill West, and Highland comes away with the win as the three seed. It's been a rocky season for the Tartans, but at the end of the day, they get the job done with a South Jersey crown. Yeah, you know, I've seen Highland throughout the season. And it has been a weird season for them, Mike. Um, they, their coach resigned uh, in the middle of the season. They've had injury issues, which every team does, but they've had injury issues. They've had some skin issues. They've had, they've had discipline issues. They've had academic issues. This team really, you know, through the years, kind of been a ragtag type of bunch. And, you know, it wasn't too long ago they kind of got beaten soundly by Clearview towards the end of the season, and then in the semifinals they went to Clearview and beat them soundly. So right before the playoffs, things just started to click. The lineup came back together. Um, interim coach Frank Plefka has done a very, very good job, and so have his assistants as well, and Holkey and uh, Huff and, and people who've really laid it all on the line to help achieve the common goal. And what you saw last night was a team that really, from the start, you know, in the past couple of years, Mike, I've seen them in the playoffs. I've seen them get eliminated, and I, and I alluded to this in, in my story, but there were times where you questioned how fragile they were emotionally uh, in, a, in a match. You know, they get too up and down, you know, and last night that didn't happen. I mean, they were pedal to the metal from the start. They were all in. They were a team effort. And it was really refreshing to see. So they, they deserved it, absolutely. South Jersey Group 5 final. I mean, this was a war, Southern and Kingsway. And you were at that Kingsway semifinal matchup over Cherokee. And the Dragons found a way to get it done when they had lost to the Chiefs earlier this season. But just too much going against Southern. And that you know that machine that is Southern wrestling in Manahawkin just keeps on churning right into the state semifinals. Yes, yeah, Southern is very good. And you know, Kingsway, I think at the beginning of the year, that's exactly where they wanted to be. And they said even, you know, during practices before any meets had started, uh, Coach Mike Barickian said, you know, make no bones about it. We know there's some good teams here, Cherokee, Eastern, uh, and he went down a laundry list because it was a very, it was probably, it was our best group by far, South Jersey Group 5. But he said, you know, we expect to be wrestling Southern for the championship. Now, I don't know if things panned out the way he'd imagined in terms of injuries. You know, they lost Colin Wexler for a little while. Uh, Anthony Rosano had some issues with with health as well, but they got there and um, and they made a run at it. You know, when after the Cherokee match, he told me, hey, "Look, we're going to wrestle. We want to compete. We want to be close. You know, hopefully we pull it off." Um, but you know, they've had an outstanding season, and the midget program is so good there. It's only going to keep going for Kingsway. Paulsboro gets the job done in South Jersey Group 1. Delcy, of course, gets the job done. Uh, they were tested against Lacey in South Jersey Group 3, but those are two teams uh, we certainly expected to advance to the state semifinal round. But I want to flip the coin a little bit here, Mark, talk about some of the non-public championships last night. And it can't get any closer than Camden Catholic, St. Augustine, and these teams ended up tied. It went down to criteria. 
and Camden Catholic gets the better of St. Augustine. And when you talk about those two teams, you talk about two of the, really from top to bottom, better lineups in South Jersey this year. Yeah, St. Augustine's had a very odd season. I think if you look back at the Kingsway match where they kind of had a mistake with sending out the kid at the at the wrong time and they had to forfeit that that bout. I think you look at um, Delcy, they, they were right there. They kind of shifted things around in, in a way and, and lost by, I think, double digits or close to it. But very easily, you know, maybe could have could have won that. And then last night, you know, which was an oddity in its own right, the, the, you know, St. Augustine was very close to being the number two team in South Jersey. Who knows where they're going to land now. But Camden Catholic's a team, you know, they're going to be strong next year, too. They bring a lot back. It's sort of a prep, but Matt Walsh, you know, I don't think he believed necessarily when things kicked off here that they were at that St. Augustine level. I, he told me that, you know, I, we're not quite there, but next year maybe. And they were there. Now for St. Augustine, they they had a you know they they were docked a team point um, because of an unsportsmanlike on Coach Bill Ward, which I mean it's not the, certainly not the first time Bill Ward's had a, a point docked, but that's what ended up coming back to haunt them. So kind of a what might have been there for them, not just last night, but really for the whole season. If you look at South Jersey wrestling, I mean they like I said they were very close to being the number two team, and and as you mentioned, Paul, I mean Paulsburg's number one. With a bullet, you know, Paul's burnt Delcy, red and white. It's hard to bet against them this time of the year to get down to Tom's River. And then the one bracket that often gets overlooked is South Jersey non-public B, but quietly, Holy Spirit, I don't know if you call it a dynasty, but they win again. They knock off Donovan Catholic on the road, and, you know, you know about some of the struggles, Mark. I don't have to tell you about some of these teams in, in non-public B even trying to fill a lineup, and quite frankly, a lot of them can't, but... You know, a lot of credit to Holy Spirit for just finding a way to year in, year out to get the job done. I mean, it's a different story. It's just a different level in the state final for even the non-public A teams going up against these North Jersey powerhouses. But, you know, what does it say for Holy Spirit to, again, get the job done and and find a way to to fill out a lineup and not just fill it out? They really have some hammers in that lineup as well. Well, I couldn't be more pleased for Ralph Pallone. He's one of my favorite guys in the sport, and um, and certainly his kids and Fitzpatrick and Waz and and we talk. I know we talk about them every week on this show, um, and I know the Waz and family's listening. So I hope you guys are doing all right. But you know, Ralph Pallone has uh, he's found a way to make it work. And really, when you get down to it, the nitty gritty in this non-public B, it's a different sport. I mean, it's the same thing on the mat. But to understand, you know, how the forfeits are going to come in, you know, you get these weigh-in sheets. It might only have eight kids on it. Um, to fill out enough spots to to end up getting through three years in a row, I mean it's such a credit to him. Um, and I and I know they've taken their lumps this season, but to be able to to get there, to be able to scramble around the state and get some good bouts for for Wazen and Fitzpatrick guys who he believes you know and should be you know state top state caliber kids. I think it says a lot about Ralph, and Ralph has this obsession with the sport that is so um, contagious, you know. So it's not a question of why kids would want to wrestle for him, and the ones that do have been rewarded the past three years. So I'm very happy for Ralph. He's he's a real joy to speak with and to get to know. All right, Mark, we got about a minute here, so I'll put you on the spot, and we got to be a little on the quicker side, but, you know, I sure. think Paulsboro is probably a favorite or at least, you know, a heavy contender to bring home a state championship on Sunday in Tom's River. Is there another team coming out of South Jersey that you can see getting the job done up there? Is the road just too tough for some of these other matchups? Well, I don't think Southern can beat Howe. I don't think um, I don't think Highland can beat Long Branch or, or Phillipsburg or whoever they have to get through there at the, at the end. I, Delcy might be able to beat Pascac Valley and, and advance to the championship, but I think South Plainfield might be too much. Um, I, and in the parochials, in a way, I, I I think it's Paulsboro, and I, I really think that's the only one we're going to get. I, there's a possibility with Delcy, um, but Paulsboro is the – they will win. They will beat Emerson Park Ridge, I believe. All right, this is the fun time of year for uh, high school wrestling fans, of course, as we get into uh, districts next weekend, regions after that, and then uh, you'll be spending, what, just a couple hours at Boardwalk Hall and a couple weeks for the state championship. So, Mark Tribble of the Courier Post, appreciate the time, my friend, and I'll see you uh, close to a mat very soon. Hey, Mike, absolutely, man. Thanks.
All right, you got it. Again, Mark Tribble from the Courier Post breaking down some high school wrestling, also breaking down some Eagles parade celebration, and I'm sure Billy Schwime and the crew will get much more into that.